Hey, here we are live at 4.30 or a little bit after 4.30 on a Monday afternoon and 4.30 Pacific time, of course, not necessarily uh, where other people are. Let me take the hat off so you can see uh, see my face a little bit better there. Uh, I'm at an undisclosed location. Some of you might recognize it from other videos I've made uh, because I've been here before. Boy, that's really up there, isn't it? But we wanted to go ahead and have a uh, video this week, even though I'm not in the studio and in the office. Uh, Dr. Gwaine is, and he's seeing patients, thankfully keeping things going, and our students helping him, and our PAs are helping them. But I wanted to be able to at least have uh, a little connection with our audience on, uh, on a Monday afternoon, like we always do, and talk about a topic, a health-related topic. Today it's going to be Hymenoptera, which I didn't put in the title because nobody knows what that is necessarily. Well, not nobody, but... Most people wouldn't know what that is. That's the stinging insects of a particular uh, class uh, that includes honeybees and wasps and hornets and uh, imported fire ants that they have in Texas. And those are horrible things. And the reason the topic came up was because my daughter this morning got stung by some kind of stinging insect. And we think it was probably one of those. Uh, didn't see a stinger afterwards, so more likely a, a wasp or hornet, that type of thing. Not, not, a, uh, not an ant, not a fire ant, but probably a flying insect of sorts with the wings. Actually, that's how they get their name, Hymenoptera. It refers to the structure of the wings. I'm not sure how the ants get in on that. They're related. Um, normal fire ants don't. I don't know if the queen does or not. People who know more about zoology would be able to answer that. But we do have quite a number of people watching, and I I think the chat is working, and you're welcome to do it. We'd be glad to uh, talk to you on the chat and answer questions or comments if you have them. If uh, the chat chat is not working, I apologize that uh, I did something wrong if, it, if it's not, but uh, we will try to make the, uh, the chat work here. I'm setting the settings on. That's why I'm looking at this, the screen here so that you can see if there are... Uh, chat messages also if they come through so uh, do make sure to put a message in there if if you are able to uh, if if somehow I set it up incorrectly and you're not able to that's fine we'll just go ahead and talk about uh, the stings and other things that might happen to come into the conversation as we're talking here on a, a live YouTube stream uh, I do have an updated ending you know how we have the names going at the ends of these videos those of you who watch regularly uh, that won't be uh, oh, okay we do have chat so Lindsay is here she's she's happy to see my face thank you you can see my hands too if you want my hands and face as well also uh, the video where the names come up with Lindsay's name they're not moving because she's one of the you know big contributors on patreon so she gets a, a place of honor there along with some other people uh, that will be updated uh, next week I've already made it I just haven't put it in place of course if there were to be other changes on patreon if people click on the link and go to patreon which is actually in the description right now uh, you would be able to have your name on it for next week if you did it right now because I'd have time to remake the the video that we play at the end uh, we also will have a little different because our normal director won't be here or won't be in the studio next week uh, we have um, Holly will be out for a period, possibly six weeks. We'll see how long it is. And uh, so I'll, oops, sorry about that. I'll have to be running the show, which uh, I'll be a little distracted running the show, but Dr. Gwaine will be able to keep the smooth conversation going for you. So we uh, introduce the topic here, Hymenoptera. It includes, <clears throat> excuse me, it includes, oh, and you may hear some children. There, there may be children in this video somewhere in the lake. Uh, hopefully not the youngest one in the lake. He tried that earlier. Uh, it, yeah, it's not supposed to work that way. Keeping the face out of the water we found is important. So everything's okay. I don't want you to worry. But uh, yeah, there was a bit of excitement there for a moment. Hymenoptera. So bees, honeybees, uh, bumblebees, wasps, uh, yellow jackets, and then the fire ants. They can sting you or bite you in the case of ants and inject some venom that can do just very unpleasant things to your body, uh, causing a lot of itching and swelling and pain, and in some people even risking their, their lives, uh, putting their lives at risk with a reaction called anaphylaxis, which is a systemic, meaning body-wide allergic response where you'll have things like decreased blood pressure, people may get lightheaded or feel woozy. Uh, it can also cause problems with the airway, closing up the airway, causing swelling in the back of the throat, causing voice changes or difficulty swallowing, uh, wheezing. These are all really, really bad things that need to be addressed very quickly 
because a certain number of people, like somewhere around 40, I think, per year, die in the United States from an allergic reaction to this very uh, group of organisms that we're talking about. So it's an important thing. Uh, it's treatable. You know, people have these EpiPens. Maybe you've heard of them. Little pens that are currently hard to get paid for by insurance for some reason. They're filled with a medicine called epinephrine or adrenaline, if you're from across the pond, that can be just slammed right into the pen. Just slam it right into the thigh. Don't bother taking the clothes off um, if they're on. Just get it into that leg as fast as possible. And the it's called an auto injector that they come in and it's spring loaded. And so the spring uh, shoots the, the needle and the medicine right into the leg. And hopefully one is enough, usually it is, to keep somebody from continuing to have that reaction, but sometimes they have to be dosed a second time. That's why it's important to get medical attention if one of those is used on a person who could have uh, an anaphylactic or systemic allergic reaction to a bee sting. Um, there's other things that help with it. You know, when it's not quite this full body, I'm getting lightheaded or I'm losing the ability to breathe type of reaction, when it's just the, the local reaction with itching and a rash, then you can use, you know, like home remedies like Benadryl or Zyrtec for the itching. Um, Benadryl you have to be careful of in people over age 65. It, it can be a bit of a problem with them with something called the anticholinergic effect. So I do encourage people for, if it's for itching, if you can get by with generic cetirizine, that would be better than to get the, the Benadryl or the generic for it is diphenhydramine. Try to, try to avoid that if you can because of some potential problems um, more so in the older folks, not, not as much an issue when you're younger, it usually just makes you more sleepy, maybe a dry mouth. Um, if you take enough of it, it can make you, you know, blurred vision, or, or if you really took a lot, it could even make you have problems with, uh, well, hallucinations if you took enough of it. So home remedies, um, cold compress, that's the number one thing for that pain. And then of course, if you can take anti-inflammatory medicines like ibuprofen or uh, naproxen, you, you can use it for that. Tylenol is also a medicine that can be used for the pain, and then cetirizine by mouth for the itching. Also, interestingly, uh, you can use uh, Pepsid for the itching. Oh, Lindsay says, uh, Lindsay uh, is one of our viewers, and she's able to chat in because this is a live show, live chat. She says, Benadryl gives, oh, I'm sorry, where'd you go, Lindsay? Benadryl gives me crazy dreams. Could be correlation, causation thing, but sure seems to. Absolutely, it can. It can do that. Um, usually, if you're taking more than just a, a single 25 milligram, which I, for most people, I do not encourage them to take more than a single Benadryl. That's that's a lot to take. So, cetirizine is the generic name for the, the Zyrtec, which seems to be good for things like itching of the skin. And then, if, if there is any problem with breathing or lightheadedness, in addition to just uh, a local reaction on the skin, you know, where you got the sting, uh, should get attention. And then, People who have had an allergic reaction before can have them again in the future. In fact, quite, quite uh, probably will. Although there is some data to suggest it won't be as severe in the future if you've had an anaphylactic reaction to this group of stings, which is not what you would necessarily expect. It's kind of unexpected that it looks like that may be the case. So uh, certainly uh, anybody who's joined the group since we started the show, if you have any comments or questions, you can put them in the chat and we can address that. Thank you, Lindsay, for already doing that. We appreciate that. And uh, give you an update on the Auburn Medical Group. Dr. Gwain is still doing his work there and we have a change in staff with both uh, Rena and uh, Megan have gone on to other, or are going on to other positions. Rena is going to work at a nephrology office. That's an office that works just with kidney disease in, uh, in the town that she lives in. She, she actually commutes to the Auburn Medical Group. So be, we wish her the best on that and that'll be great for her. And then Megan will be working at an urgent care. She just had a baby. So working at an urgent care will work out really, really well for the you know, scheduling for when she can get child care for the baby. So we're very, very happy for both of them for what they have. And we're very excited about the uh, applicants that we have. We're actually hoping that maybe uh, one or, or both of our, our new PAs will enjoy being on on YouTube with us. Kind of like the show that we do doc with Dr. Gwen. We would love to do another weekly show with another co-host if, if that would come about. So uh, in addition to it being a job interview, we also uh, try to make an audition out of it <laughs> Uh, if we get enough applicants and they're interested in that, we can do that. So any other comments or questions and seeing none, we will go ahead and 
call it a show for this week. Thank you. I, I just wanted to throw something out there this week as I'm not in the office and in the studio, but didn't want to abandon our audience on YouTube because you're so faithful to come and watch us. We wanted to, to connect with you. And special thanks, of course, to Lindsay, who is is on the Patreon, but also who uh, was on the comment. Lindsay, she, I have no medical experience, but I would be happy to come. Thank you, Lindsay. When we need a mortician, we will absolutely come uh, calling on you. Till next time. Dr. Mark Vaughn telling all of you to stay in good health. And figure out how to end the show. There we go.